Hello everybody, welcome to another update on the stock screener. Today we are going to give an update on Sierra Metals. So I recommended to buy Sierra Metals at $3, but since then it has gone down. Um, no idea why, maybe because the silver price was going down or the copper price was going down, but this is a very cheap company. And we saw this happening yesterday. People are flocking back into Sierra Metals. It was up 50% here and now it's up 35%. So investors really know that this company has a lot of value and is undervalued. So you can see these things happening in the future again because it, it is still undervalued. I think this company can easily go to four dollars and above so there is plenty of upside from here on and I'll make my case here. I think this rise has nothing to do with the technical report that just came out three days ago because we already knew that two months before. So this has something to do with the price of copper, silver and gold. And when we look at the silver swaps, you can see that the silver swaps are going long now. So that means that silver has bottomed out. So I expect silver to rise again shortly. There are a lot of shorts here that can be squeezed. The same with gold, a lot of shorts to be squeezed. And we also see here that the swaps are very positive. Gold can rise higher in the coming months. The same for copper. You can see that the copper warehouse inventories are declining. So there's a lot of shortages on the copper side. So I expect that copper will go up in the future. You can also see this here on silver. Silver has had a very bad run here in the previous months. And now I expect this to come back higher. And I think this chart is actually following Sierra Metals. Let's take a look. May was the top. And when we look here, May was the top. So I think Sierra Metals is actually following the silver price. And this rise is actually, I think, a short covering or people wanting to, to come back into the company, expecting a higher silver price in the coming months. Same with copper. Copper has been going down and now it will probably shoot back up on copper shortages. So let's take a look at the valuation. We are at 400 million market cap. Price to book is 1.78, which is a bit on the high side, but this company has a lot of earnings. So equity is 225, which is lower than the 400 million. So it's a bit overvalued on the book value side. PE is at 9, so that's actually good value with this net income. And they have a lot of cash, 70 million. They have three mines. Some of them, well, most of them have uh, COVID problems. So they said that the COVID problems will last until the end of the year. So let's hope that those problems will get resolved by next year. Let's take a look at the production numbers. So they have revised it lower to 112 million pounds of copper equivalent. And the AISC has also risen 2.6, 2.7. And Kusi mine is not profitable at this moment because silver is at $22. I have taken three 
dollars AISC because I think inflation is rising and also the silver price going down means that the copper equivalent AISC will be higher. So I took an estimate of three. So this company is still profitable. We are at a copper price of 4.2, 4.2. So this company uh, makes money and that money is around $40 million per year. Now, when we take these numbers, then we see that this company is still undervalued. So it is trading below the valuation of five times EBITDA multiple for this year, 2021. And in 2024, they will increase production. So there's plenty of upsides. It can easily double in price in 2024 when they are going to increase production rates. So Bolivar is going to double in production. Yaurikotcha is going to increase a bit and Kusi will become profitable by doubling the production rate. Now, what was the previous guidance? I have taken it here. So the previous guidance was 135. And the reason why this guidance was lowered is because of COVID. They couldn't access the high grade uh, zones, but I expect this to improve next year. So let's say we take 135 instead, right? And let's say we take the previous estimates of AISC, which was actually $2. So let's go to two dollars which was the previous estimate what do we get then in our chart then we get 400 going to 1.3 billion so this can easily go up threefold from here and when expansion occurs in 2024 when the, the production rate doubles, then we can even go to 2 billion. So there's a five bagger here. If they can resolve the COVID problems, then we could have a five bagger in two years from now. Okay, so that's, that's the premise here. They need to go back to their previous guidance of 130 million pounds of copper production and they need to decrease their costs okay so that's that but there is more okay there's more so they recently announced their magnetite project for bolivar which is actually this green Thing here and I have taken some numbers from Bolivar and you can see here that building that iron ore magnetite plant this year will increase the NPV from 280 to 360 at three dollars copper okay that's about 80 million added over a mine life of 14 years. So divide this by two and you have about $40 million extra. That's a lot. $40 million extra is 10% of the market cap. So we can easily go up 10% more just because of this magnetite project. Now, this is uh, a sensitivity analysis based on copper price and we assume that iron ore stays the same at around 100 dollars per ton i think so so that gives this 
uh, line here. So the whole NPV line shifts up by 80 million dollars over 14 years. Some more numbers. So the resources have increased from the last uh, technical report. So they have more inferred copper tons. This chart here is, they have done a sensitivity analysis on the amount of tons that they are going to process. So they have done at 5,000 tons per day, at 7,000, at 10,000, and 15,000, 12,000. And they see that 10,000 is the best uh, scenario. So they are going to go through with the 10,000 tons per day because this is giving the lowest capex and the highest NPV, okay? So if they use this here, then there would be a lot of risk involved due to the high tonnage. And the NPV is not actually going much higher, so they chose the 10,000 tons per day. I think that is a very good way to think about this less risk and good NPV. This is how the production looks like. We are now at uh, 1.6 million tons per year and this is going to uh, double to 3.6 million tons in 2024. So we have two years that we need to build this thing. Let's take a look at the capex numbers. Uh, the capex, let's take a look at the capex first. So we are now in 2021. They are going to build the magnetite recovery project for $24 million. Um, it should be built uh, and constructed and going into production next year in January. So this is already been accounted for. So they have the cash and they're going to use it, the 24 million, to build this magnetite project. And that will add 40 million in value to our share price. Now, I have also added the other capex. So we have development of the tunnel. That's a 5.2. Then we have 24 million What's the 24 million? That's the backfill plant. Then we have the 67 million is the plant growth. So they need to increase the capacity of the plant. And then we have some small items. Uh, growth of the tailings facility. And some studies. And of course the magnetite project. So total capex is around 130 million for the coming two years. I didn't take this into account. This is just sustaining capital. So initial capital is 130 million. They need to find 130 million. Where do they find that? They have still cash of 70 million. That's pretty good. And they have earnings of 45 million per year, which is going to go up next year, because I expect that they get back to their previous guidance of 130 million production and lower costs at $2. So not $3, but $2. And that should boost the cash position, also boost the share price back to around I think this is worth 800 million instead of 400. So we could still double by next year. And by next year, they will have the iron ore plant, magnetite plant ready. So that will add another 40 million. So I think there's plenty of upside for this company. And silver and copper will rebound in price. So. I think this net income will probably be around 80 million, double the current 
net income and there's plenty of cash to build the expansion at Bolivar in the coming two years. So let's let's uh, just add up all these uh, NPVs because we also have Yori Kocha. Uh, so we have first the Kusi mine. Let's start with the Kusi mine. It's at $22 silver. I expect this to go up. So they are going to expand this in two years. And this will have an NPV of 150 divided by two because they have a mine life of 15. So that's about $70 million. Then we add this here. Copper is at 4.2. That's about 700 million NPV divided by two is 350. So 350 plus the 70 is 420. So 420, and then we have the Yori Kocha. Copper price 4.2, also 700 million NPV. So let's just add another 400 to that. Then we have 800 million of uh, value currently. So basically we can double from the current price if everything stays the same. If copper stays the same, silver goes back to 25, then we can double in price right now on Sierra Metals. Based on the NPVs here, based on the production increase in two years, and based on COVID going away and going back to previous guidance. So this can easily double to here. So I expect that Sierra Metals will be going from here to here. Probably in the next year, this will go like this and make new all-time highs. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.